very much impeded right now, but we hope that within the next couple of days we can help families and um, perhaps recover remains or confirm that they're not there. We anticipated that would likely be the case when we saw what was happening. We're very fortunate that we don't have a list of 100 missing people. Um, but unfortunately, we do have three confirmed missing people. One missing person that was reported yesterday, and that person was located. Operations are put into progress this afternoon to check properties of the two continued, uh, the two or three that continue to remain unaccounted for. Weather and structure damage are going to make that difficult. In addition, investigators continue to work on determining the origin of the fire and the cause. We continue to investigate all the reports of downed power lines in the area. Each of those dips are being investigated. As of yesterday evening, we have found no credible evidence of a power line down in that area. We did find evidence of telecom lines down in that area, which could have caused reports of downed lines, but which would not have caused a fire. We have no, a number of tips we're working on. We are ex we've executed a search warrant on one particular location where we're investigating. I don't have any hard or credible evidence. I don't have probable cause to, to understand what caused the fire. As soon as we have credible, hard information, we will be releasing it. Just please know that there's a very active investigation ongoing with the Sheriff's Office and the help of federal and state partners. With regard to donations and the interest of volunteering, we appreciate the generosity of our community. It's been unbelievable. Please do not take donated items or go to the shelters to volunteer. They're being overrun. If you want to help or you want to donate, please visit the Community Foundation of Boulder County at www.comfound, C-O-M-M, -M, like communityfound.org. If you want to volunteer, please check to continue to check with the OEM on our website, and they'll be posted there. I'm going to turn the podium over now to Chief Dave Hayes from the city of Louisville. And when Dave's done speaking, we'll take questions. Good afternoon. I'm Dave Hayes. I'm the police chief in Louisville. Thank you, Sheriff, uh, for the introduction. Uh, beginning on January 1st or today at about 1 o'clock, all areas currently under pre-evacuation will be lifted in the city of Louisville. Some, some residents within the Marshall Fire Area in the city of Louisville will be allowed to return to their homes. If your home is in a hard closure area, in other words, an area that's just simply closed, you will not be allowed to return home at this time. Roads included in the hard closure uh, will be also on the OEM website. If your home is within a soft closure area in the city of Louisville, an ID will be required for re-entry. Roads included in the soft closure area will also be listed and posted on the OEM website. Residents that can return should plan on assessing the area from the east. Please be patient as lines could be long at the checkpoints. In terms of the ID cards, this is something that in addition to everything else we're trying to put together, I don't know that we're going to have ID cards available before Monday or Tuesday, but in the meantime for those soft uh, areas, uh, folks, they just need to have a driver's license or a utility bill or something that would tie them to that address in Louisville. Once we've got an ID card system in place, uh, we'll get that uh, information out as well. Officials continue to assess conditions in, in the community that will allow for re-entry of residents as soon as it is safe. It is important to remember that fire may have changed the environment around your home and community, so please be cautious as you return to your home and neighborhood. Also, please be prepared to see your uh, community changed in ways that you do not expect, and take the time if you need it. Here are some things to consider when returning home. When returning home and traveling through the area, residents are asked to slow their speeds and be alert to hazards such as weakened trees and structures. Residents are asked to limit driving to daylight hours only, to go directly to their homes and remain in and around their home. Burned structures can also have many hazards in and around them. 
Please be aware of ash pits, holes, sharp objects, such as exposed structural material, as well as areas that are still burning or smoldering in the structure. Snow may be covering hazards, including areas that are still hot. Please be sure where you are stepping and reaching are safe to prevent injury. Power may not be restored to some of these areas, and gas will not likely be turned on by the time residents start to return home. For those with electricity but no gas heat, Excel Energy is distributing space heaters at the YMCA in Lafayette and the YMCA in Boulder. There's no potable water in the affected areas, so residents should be prepared to bring bottled water with them for all water needs, including for pets. Never use water that you think may be contaminated to wash dishes, brush teeth, prepare food, wash hands, make ice, or baby formula. For residents without heat, please consider turning off the main water line and draining the house water lines to prevent a potential flood. With the power outages, food in your refrigerator or freezer may be contaminated or spoiled. Dispose of any food that has been exposed to smoke, soot, or heat, or has been thawed. Uh, City of Louisville, and I think Boulder County as well, will start to place dumpsters in some of the affected areas. That also will be posted on the OEM website. We suggest that you not use personal trash cans for that. And what that does is it simply just keeps the animals in the wrong place and animals that shouldn't be at your house. As residents return to the fire area, if there are signs that their suspicious activity has occurred, please call the tip line at 303-441-3674. And if suspicious activity is occurring while you're there or at the same time, please call 911 or the non-emergency line to the Boulder Communications Center at 303-441-4444. Uh, and I'll step aside now so Sheriff Pelley can come back up again and uh, see if you have any questions. Thank you. So, uh, for the media folks, I plan on meeting with you daily at 2 uh, for the time being because I think there's going to be interest in what's happening with uh, recovery efforts and the investigation for a few days. So we'll just keep this time spot open and uh, probably this space, although once we open for business next week, we may have to move somewhere. We'll figure that out. Uh, the, we were having audio trouble a few minutes ago, so I'm going to repeat a couple things. Uh, first, I'm going to repeat the current count for damaged and destroyed structures. Uh, apparently, the audio wasn't good during that. So our current estimate, and I believe uh, an estimate that's very close to being final is that a total of 553 homes were destroyed in the city of Louisville and 45 were damaged. In the town of Superior, 332 homes were destroyed and 60 were damaged. And in unincorporated Boulder County, the areas outside of those town limits, 106 homes were destroyed and 22 damaged. That's a total of 991 structures destroyed and 127 structures damaged. I'm also, I was also asked to repeat briefly about the investigation. We currently have not located down power lines. In the area, the reports were likely down telecommunication lines that we spoke about yesterday and not power lines. And secondly, we are actively investigating a number of tips that came in yesterday and last night from the community. One of those tips has resulted in us executing a search warrant on a property and there are investigations underway and ongoing into the cause and origin of the fire. Do we? Do you have questions? Sheriff, can you say uh, is the, the search warrant that you guys have is for the address of 5325 Alvarado? I'm not going to confirm anything about locations or names or anything else until we have some more solid information. And then have, uh, have you guys, the, the video that's been circulating on uh, social media, Twitter specifically, Part of your investigation, what can you say about that? It is. Can you say, is it, are you looking at illegal burning as potentially a cause of the wildfire? We're looking at any cause of the wildfire. Are there still active hotspots that you're worried about? You know, I would say no, but I was driving home late last night in the snow and uh, 
heard him dispatch on an apartment that recaught, you know. So uh, there are still areas of a lot of areas of heat in that in the burn zone, especially in in the buildings themselves that burnt down. So I expect that we'll see smoke and maybe some rekindling for a period of a few days. Are you start you um, uh, suspect arson or carelessness or recklessness? We don't know. We're, we're looking into the cause and origin of the fire. And if it turns out to be arson or reckless, you know, reckless behavior with fire, we'll take appropriate actions. Uh, it was a red flag day, the day of the fire, so there shouldn't have been any burning uh, of anything. And um, again, we had the reports of, of lines down, but that could we believe that maybe people were seeing tele telecom lines that hang under the power lines that were down rather than the power lines themselves. So. Uh, 